Hey. It's good to be here with you again today, uh, even in these crazy remote times that we are finding ourselves in even to this day. What a year it has been and what a year it's going to be yet. Uh, so just a few quick words of announcements for you for those who um, didn't get email uh, from me this morning. My apologies for the lateness in that. I had made that document earlier in the week and uh, never sent it out to you until this morning. So um, I'm hoping that y'all got it because you're here at least, or you finally figured out how to log into Zoom without that link. So um, good to have you with us. And uh, in that email, a couple of announcements I, I shared with you are, <clears throat> Uh, upper rooms. I know some of you were fortunate enough to get upper rooms in large yeah. print because they yeah. were here in the middle of December. Our small print ones never arrived. And so Melissa had to call and chase them down. I don't know if they're lost somewhere <laughs> in the in the mail system. They just never came to us. So she called. There's another order coming. When they come in, I'll let you know. I'll make sure that I have them on the porch. And it's my hope to have upper rooms uh, when they come. My hope is by next Sunday, you'll have envelopes. If you're somebody who wants an envelope, uh, either call, text, email me, do any of those. Um, if you are somebody who's always had them, you'll get them. But if you're somebody who would like them this year, let me know if you haven't had them, uh, if you didn't get them last year. So um, just send me a note or call me uh, and I will make sure that you get added to that list as well. Um, I had to do some computer work to figure out how to do that appropriately and document it in the computer side so that we know whose envelopes belong to whom if you decide not to sign your envelope uh, and give cash because uh, some of us give cash instead of a check. So. Um, I want to make sure that that is transparent so that we know who is who is we're tracking these gifts that are being given to the church. Uh, and so by next Sunday, for sure, those will be done. But please, if you would like them, let me know. Um, and then uh, today we're going to talk about Star Wars. Did any of you have your Star Word from last year? Hey, yeah. some of you <coughs> pulled them out. Yes, great. Yeah. Uh, some of you weren't with us because you were in another state. You were in warmer territory, in theory. Uh, <laughs> so uh, if that was cut. you, congratulations. Uh, we're happy that you're still here with us today. Oh, look, Angie, you've got oh, yours yeah. and Jay's. Uh, um, you're here with us this year, right? So as we look forward to a new year, we're going to talk a little bit about what these are. Um, and how we can use them in the year ahead. Uh, and what, um, if you want to pick one yourself on your own, there was a list that was sent uh, in your, at the very bottom of that uh, document that I attached this morning. There's some that are suggestions that you can pull from. You can really pick any word that you want, or if you want the pure randomness of it all, uh, I'll have them available on the porch this week in, a, in the box as well so that you can stick your hand inside a bag and just randomly draw one. I'll be working on Delicious. filling out a few more uh, later on this week or this afternoon and make sure that we have more than enough for our whole congregation. So if you come, you can have one for you and your spouse. Uh, you, you both can pick one from the baggie on the porch. So know that those will, things will be happening. There are still ornaments available if you, um, and they will continue right. to be available if you would like to purchase one uh, to give out. Uh, I know some of you said, let me know if there were extra. I, I, Maria, Della, and I still have lots of them to be able to gift you, uh, to help you gift to others uh, as well. And um, I think those are the announcements that I need to share with you at this point in time. Um, other, oh, the one thing that just popped into my head before I forget, uh, Maria, myself, and Della will be going to deliver items to the school tomorrow for our teachers and in our administrators. Uh, all, all of our schools in Freeland Public School will be receiving a gift bag from us. Uh, Della has very graciously been working on gathering and assembling with the help of Melissa to uh, and, her, and Della's family to put these little teacher bags, little teacher blessing bags together. And they have like cute little gimmicky things like 
Um, I don't even remember. We have Rice Krispie treats. We've got bubbles. We've got little hand clappers. Um, <laughs> what else, Maria? Uh, let's see. Um, you know, you said bubbles. There's like a ten thousand dollar grand candy bars. Different candies are in there, and there's like a little verse, little poem verse that goes with each candy item or item. Yeah, it's really cute. Really cute. Something to let us know, let the teachers know and the administrators know that we're thinking of them, we're praying for them in this tumultuous year that they have had and that it's not over yet, that we love them, we support them. And uh, we're doing this and many other things throughout this year that you will be able to partner with us together uh, as a way of celebrating 175 years of ministry, today, our, uh, Jan, the, the first day of the year launched officially, even though we kind of launched in Advent, 175 years of ministry celebration throughout the year. So as we proceed forward through the year, there will be opportunities to serve. Maria is the point person for February, which will include handing out, hopefully, hugs, hugs, little chocolate hugs, um, <laughs> and little candies and little baggies as we help deliver, pick up groceries and help people load them into their cars at Pat's. We don't have dates set for that yet, but we'll work on getting those set and out to you all. So if you want to join in an hour of doing something like that, we think that we can do that safely enough. Uh, those who are willing and able to do so. Uh, so stay tuned for other opportunities to serve and be in ministry to the community, friends. Let us prepare. Let's continue in our worship time together. Hear these words to center ourselves this morning. Light shines in the darkness. A star guides our way to the Christ child. Hope is born again. Even in these strange times, friends, hope is born again to all of us. I'm going to work on muting you all if you are not muted yet um, so that we don't get all garbly here. Maria, I got gotcha. you. Do I have everybody? I think I do. Okay. Um, so would you join with me in the call to worship? Arise, shine, for your light has come. We are called out of our darkness into, into light. Lift your eyes and look around. We rejoice in the gifts of light. Come, let us worship the God of light and joy and peace. We come to kneel at the cradle of the babe, the light incarnate. Our first song this morning is There's a Song in the Air. It's number 249 in your hymnal.
the scripture. We have two different verses I'm sharing with you this morning. The first comes from Ephesians, beginning at chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation as I wrote above in a few words a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit. That is the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body and sharers in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of this of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church, the wisdom of God and its rich variety might be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal, the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The second scripture lesson today comes from the gospel of Matthew chapter two, verses one through 12, a familiar story that we hear every year or almost every year on when we celebrate Epiphany Sunday. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born of the king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and to you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had, appear, had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warmed in a, warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another, word, another road. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God in us, and for the word of God around us, we say. Thanks be to God. Folks, as I said, today is Epiphany. The one, the celebration of the Magi coming to see Jesus, coming to gift him with these royal gifts. Does anybody know what the word Epiphany means? Folks, we don't have a whole lot of kids with us this morning, so you get to participate in this because this is a time for all people of all ages, and I rejoice in that, that we truly are kids at heart, and the moment that we are not kids at heart, a lot of joy is taken from us, right? Yeah, so you're feel, feel free to unmute yourselves. Does anybody know what epiphany means? Ooh, that's a good question, eh? All right. I I always say if it's an epiphany to me, it's like an enlightening. 
like enlightenment you know it's like wow what an epiphany i yeah, I, yeah. enlightenment to shine light on to yeah. even to show shine down on epiphany and so today begins the season of epiphany in the life of the church that we enter into between now and really the beginning of lent and the whole theme of the next several weeks as we prepare for lent as we engage in these weekly scriptures is the scriptures are to show us the point of the scriptures are to show us who jesus is stories of who this child of god is that came to us in human form god incarnate and so that's what the season of epiphany is all about and we begin that celebration by the journey of the magi and we sing we'll sing the song after the sermon this morning but uh we we sing the song that represents three kings or portrays three kings we don't necessarily know that number for sure in scripture we just know that they brought three three gifts so we assume that there were at least three of them, one bearing each gift, but there could have been more magi or wise men or kings, uh, all of the different words that are used for them. They go searching for that king and they land at Herod's feet. Herod, was Herod a nice man? No, Herod was not a nice man. And he lies to them and says, I want to know where this, this, is, this young prince is at, this young king is at, so I too can go worship him. We know with the rest of this story, right? We know that he doesn't want to go worship him. He wants to go gather up those, all of those young boys and kill them all. Ugh, it's a gruesome story in our Bible not alone there are others that are like that right but that's not the that, that's not the end of the story these wise men put their lives at risk by going to jesus and then after they decide it's time to leave after they've given the gifts that are kingly gifts of what help me out what do they bring guys are quiet today. gold frankincense and myrrh gold frankincense and myrrh all of which have a little bit of prediction <clears throat> to them thank you carolyn and all of which have significance right for this king this christ child who has come to be our king our savior our lord and so they decide it's time to part depart that home and they're warned in a dream. What are they warned in the dream about? Help me tell the story, folks. They're warned to not, not return, back. not come back, go a different way. Ha, huh. <laughs> they had to change their course. Hence, they were wise men. <laughs> Hence, they were wise men. Hmm, and what does it mean for us to listen to what God prompts us to do? Would we too heed the that wisdom by listening for the voice of God and prompting the promptings of the voice of God? And so they go. And we remember their wisdom in seeking this great king that came in the form of a baby and we remember their wisdom in listening to the voice of God, directing them another way. And we remember that Christ child who we gather to pay homage every Sunday when we gather to worship together as the body of Christ. Will you pray with me? Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, thank you for this Christ child who has come to dwell among us to show us a better way of living, to show us who you are and how we are to live in this world. God, help us be those people who are full of love and mercy and forgiveness and grace for all the people who we encounter in this world today. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen. 
So friends, sometimes when we vacation or travel, things go absolutely perfect, right? Sometimes. <laughs> I feel like more often or not, the latter is true. So sometimes we get stuck at, at the gate of the airport talking to the TSA agents. Uh, been there, done that in 2020. That was real fun, trying to get into my international flight. Um, or even getting caught trying to come back into the country where they're sifting through all of the things in your luggage, pulling out everything that you very carefully packed so that it wouldn't break. Sometimes things go very wrong when, we're, when traveling. Sometimes we forget our luggage. Maybe sometimes it's a toothpaste. Maybe it's our underwear. Maybe our swimsuit. We've had those occurrences, I think all of us probably, I would imagine, whether it's a small item or a big item. Sometimes we get sick along the way. Sometimes we realize that our cards, our, our debit cards no longer work because in this day and age, they think it's fraud. That's a good thing. <laughs> uh, so we learn that we must plan ahead to communicate to our banks. Sometimes there's other natural disasters that happen. There's weather related issues like blizzards or tornadoes or thunderstorms or hurricanes or you name it. Things don't always go quite the way we plan them or hope them to be, right? Feel like that's 2020 in a nutshell. It didn't go quite as we had planned. And yet I wonder when we think about that, what the Magi thought about along their journey as they followed that light in the sky, they thought they were going to meet this great king, which they did, maybe not in the same way they would have anticipated when they started on that journey. They followed the mysterious star in the sky. Did they have the expectations would go just right and they would return on the same road or that they would have to take a bold step of faith and learn a new way? Not knowing that their lives might too be in danger. I wonder if they were open to what was before them as God changed their plan before them. As we reflect on what the past year has been for each of us, let us look to the Magi for wisdom and peace as we embrace a year that didn't go quite as we expected it would. And be hopeful and move forward with the wisdom and grace that we can, that we know we can overcome what is thrown at us. Together in partnership with God and our brothers and sisters in Christ, by the power and peace of the Holy Spirit. You know, so many people have just said, I've seen and I've heard people say, I just wanna be done with 2020. And yet there was so much that we gained in 2020, even though there was stuff that we lost. Yes, I know things did not go any way in which we had planned and hoped. I hope we have all learned and grown and taken some meaningful things away from what 2020 was as we look forward to a new year together there are things that we can carry with us that will give us strength as we move forward through what 2021 will bring to us as well because much of 2020 really isn't over at the end of the year whether we want it to be or not we are still here in the midst of a pandemic hearing words that we never thought we would hear <clears throat> and maybe getting tired of hearing those words, admittedly, and tired of saying those words. However, they're the reality that we're in. And so as we think back to where we began last year with those star words, and again, whether you were with us or not, enter into this dialogue with us because it's hopefully going to have some meaning for you in the year ahead. Um, I remember hearing about this the first time. These star words are, are a new trend, I guess. So yeah, your pastor is picking up on a trend and that's okay because I think that there's good meaning that's found in them. 
I've seen several friends over the course of the last three to five years picking up this theme of picking a word every year, a, a word that would help them stay focused, a word that would help them grow and lean into something new, perhaps. And sometimes you could, some people do that intentionally with much prayer and discernment. And other times you get things like this on Sunday morning that the kids hand out to you and then go, what does this word really mean to me? And that's what it was last year. It was a bunch of randomness that you received. Maybe not totally randomness as the year evolved, as you looked at the word and said, what is God teaching me in this? You know, some of those words, for those of you who have them, can you share what you had? Would you be bold and unmute and share what your words were, if you remember? I won't. Go ahead, Maria. Uh, yeah, the first one they gave me was blank, the star. And so they gave me another one and it fell on the floor in the church and they picked it up and guess what it was? Hospitality. Hmm. And I thought, wow, uh, thank you, Lord, because I love, you know, having people over or, yeah, I just like entertaining, but I didn't do a whole lot of that, but I still try to be hospitable in different ways. So hospitality. Hospitality. Mine is righteousness. Righteousness. Yeah. And believe it or not, I had to look it up to get the actual definition because, you know, you assume you know what words mean. Yeah. But I had I had to look it up. Good. Mine was awareness. Well, that's good. I think that definitely was huge for me this year aware of taking stock of everything that's around me still in some of the toughest times. Okay. Judy, did you unmute? Did you want to share? Yeah, my word was creativity, which pretty good. I've been doing and sewing and baby sweaters and hats and mittens and all kinds of stuff like that. Good. Uh, mine, mine was boldness. Hmm. And uh, I think through this last year, I identified with it by not being afraid to speak up for the things that I saw that went against what I believed in. And that took some courage. <laughs> it does indeed. Bill, did you have one too? Were you with us on that Sunday? Yes, perhaps, I was, but I can't remember. I think it might have been <laughs> devotion, but okay, <laughs> that's all right. Devoted Sorry to put you on the spot. Devoted, I'd be too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Others that have their star that like to share. Trying to watch. Thank you for sharing. Um, oh, Angie, did you just unmute? Yeah, Jason's was giving. Giving. I think his life was giving. I, I would agree with that and giving every moment to his fullest, I think. Oh. I think Charlene had something to say. Charlene, do you have one too? Do I need to unmute you? There, can you prompt, click the button? There. there. Uh, mine was discipline. Discipline. That was tough. I, I vowed to spend more time on my Bible reading and scripture reading and I got a little bit lax. Now I'm determined to do it again. <laughs> Good. Thank you for sharing. Others. Thank you all. Um, I hope that that was a meaningful process and it sounds like it was for some of you. And if it, if you didn't get an opportunity, I'm going to challenge you to do it this year because I think that there is great beauty in, in these words. And I know some of, some of you didn't know what the word really meant and that's fine. Um, honestly, I think part of the journey of this is learning about the word and the different ways that the word can be applied to our life in different areas of our life and our relationship with God as well. So um, what does it mean for us to use this word in our relationships? 
with one another in our relationship with God in in the world of finances for us personally, um, in our uh, social media presences, um, you know, all of the areas of life. What does it mean for us to embrace being a whole person with our word in all of the ways that we encounter life as it unfolds before us? And so I asked you to take that word home in that star word. And yeah, some of the kids probably dropped them. I love that, Maria. I forgot that you got a blank one first <laughs> because I had blank ones that weren't filled out in the, in the, in the, in the little uh, baggie that I gave the kids. And so uh, what you may have thought was God doing a haha joke on you. <laughs> <laughs> really, uh, then, then the hospitality of it getting dropped and picked up for you um, is, is a gift in itself, I think, at times. Um, and, and, you know, we can be, laugh at the randomness of this, but I think even in the randomness of getting those words handed out to you, God can still speak and use the word. And I know some of you came out last year like, I'm, already, I'm good at this word. I don't need work in this. And yet I think even in the times that I've participated in this, that I've gotten a word that I thought I was okay in, God's still shown me ways that, would, that I could grow in. Because not all of us still need work, no matter how good we think we are. That's part of our lifelong journey is to continue to learn and continue to grow. And that's a wonderful gift that we get from God each day as we face each day anew. Our bodies are always learning and growing. That's how we live and how we breathe. And so I want you to think about that. Um, Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing, perfect will. Mine was renewal. And the amount of, I drew randomly. So yeah, I made them all, but I still closed my eyes and grabbed out of the baggie just like all of you did. I spent much time reflecting on the ways in which God was helping me renew my mind, my body, and my spirit. Little did I know just how important that word would become for me as I continued to lean into the unease of what it meant to be renewing myself as a follower of Christ, as a leader of the church traveling to the Holy Land, as a pilgrim, as a leader in this challenging time of the coronavirus, while where everything about my role, my call as a pastor, not necessarily my call, but my role as a pastor has changed, and yet it still stayed the same because Sunday still rolls around and the worship still needs to happen in some capacity. And we've learned that we can do that in new ways. What a great thing. What a great thing. At every opportunity, even after the challenge was over, I found myself in my time, my personal reflection time, reflecting on the ways in which I was experiencing renewal, even if it was really stretching me. Some of you already shared what challenged you or where you found the blessing in that word last year. And if you haven't thought about that, spend some time thinking about that. God uses those, these words to help us to grow, to inspire us to something new, to give us courage for the moment that we face each day. T.S. Eliot said, is known to be said, for last year's words belong to last year's language and next year's words await another voice. Let me say that again. For last year's words belong to last year's language and next year's words await another voice. So friends, the question that I have for you is what word might God be calling you to this year? If you're struggling with picking one, as I shared, there was a list at the end of the bulletin that I sent out last night or this morning. Uh, <laughs> I also have about 40 stars in a baggie and I'll be adding to those with some new words as well. Uh, in the next, hopefully by the end of the day, I'll add some more to that. But if you wanna swing by the porch uh 
I can mail one out to you, Carolyn, if you'd like that as well. Um, but swing by, pick one That'd up if good. you want. Okay. <laughs> um, swing by the Parsonage porch and pick one up, grab one out of the baggie or the basket, whatever I end up dropping them in on the porch. Um, if you would like or intent be intentional and explore what that word might be. If you're at home and you don't want to swing by and grab one from me, uh, draw a star, put the star someplace where you are reminded of it every day. Um, let it be a word of challenge. Maybe that coincides with your new year resolutions. If you are somebody who is setting goals and new year's resolutions for yourself, let it be a word that stretches you to become the better version of yourself the more holistic godly person that we are called to be as we continue to grow in the knowledge and the grace of God. Let it be a word that inspires you to do something new, to step out of your comfort zone, to dare to be different, to have more compassion with yourself and with others whom you encounter. May, may it be a word that is going to nurture your relationship with God. Sometimes we do indeed need to take another way home. Sometimes another detour, although challenging, helps us to be more aware to the things that surround us. This past year was challenging for all of us. None of us are, are apart from that. We all had our own unique challenges this year. I pray we can look back and identify the ways that we grew as a people of God. Pray that we can look back and celebrate the ways that we as a church still showed up to serve our community. Let me highlight some of those great things that we did for you last year. Beginning by collecting items for St. Agnes, collecting items for the East Side Soup Kitchen, flood supplies following the, the second big flood in three years that we had in our community, for the huge amount of school supplies that we gathered as a group so that we could bless our teachers and our students and our communities through the, the community event that we had. And the faithfulness that you all had in supporting the Red Wagon Food Basket Ministry Program for Thanksgiving and Christmas. That list of items is so incredibly long for the whole year. Um, lots, hundreds of items that you gave, not to mention the what else am I missing? The angel tree and the abundance that you gave out of what you have to offer support to others in our community that surrounds us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of good still happen in 2020. We shouldn't lose sight of that. God is going to continue to do great things in us and through us. Um, much like the Magi, God will be with us even when things go unexpectedly and Christ will still illumine our path if we keep our eyes and ears open and attentive to what the Holy Spirit is prompting us to do. We will still be blessed. We will still encounter the Holy as we wander our way through different circumstances than we had imagined. When we partner with the triune God, we will obtain a wisdom that will help us be a more whole person, a more whole, more Christ-centered people who are empowered by the Holy Spirit to embrace everything that God has given us to overcome. May it be so. Friends, seek the word with patience and grace. Be challenged by the word that you pick whether out of the baggie or with some intention today, be inspired to learn and grow. Again, may it be so. Amen. And now it's time to sing that song that we sing just once a year, <laughs> if we're lucky. Uh, so I will share my screen and we will sing We Three Kings, number 254. I believe we are singing all verses. I'm sorry, I meant to share that we only had two in the last uh, last song, but I believe we did all four verses. Let me find my place. Um, or maybe only three. Play it by ear. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be surprised one way or another. <laughs>
And perhaps there were just two verses that we would sing. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. It is time for a word of prayer. Carolyn, I love that I just saw Miss Haiti pop on too. Charlene, I yes. hope you've got she to just see got her up. face. <laughs> if not, we'll have to have you hang around after to say hello to one another, okay? Yes. Yep. She's eating <laughs> breakfast. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so words of uh, prayer to share. Um, we have a list here. Um, and I know, uh, Angie, you are sharing about Tyler updates on him as he came home from Hurley uh, Friday, Saturday, Friday or Saturday. And there was a motorcade that kind of they did a parade on their way from the um, exit at 10, I think that was right. Um, all the way back to his house, it kind of threw some people off in Midland. <laughs> I saw some commentary about that, that there was great concern that something was going on in town. And there was a beautiful thing that was going on in town to celebrate the community support, uh, both in going down and, and lighting up outside the parking lot for him as he uh, has a long journey ahead of him yet with more surgeries, I'm sure, and um, lots of healing for sure with burns. Uh, from a, a response that he had. Charlene, are you raising your hand? Yes. Okay. I'm going to ask you to unmute. My granddaughter is married to a, a Saginaw policeman and they took part in that sharing and it was as moving to her as it could be. It was just an awesome experience to be a part of that praying for Tyler. Just wanted Angie to know that. Yeah. Wonderful. So beautiful. Such a beautiful, beautiful way to be the community. And even in these goofy times that we're in. Thank you. Excuse me for sharing that, Charlene. Um, let's see. So um, I, we celebrated the life of Barbara Crocker on Tuesday. Uh, that's Jan Lowell's aunt. She um, She's also a member and been around the church for a few years as well, but she is uh, was 93, 94, uh, and her life ended and she is at home with her, um, at home in glory with her first husband and with Ben as well. So they, I'm sure, joyfully um, welcomed her home along with Jesus. Um, the same is also said of Don DeFord, who passed away on uh, Tuesday as well. I got word about his passing just prior to Barbara's service. Uh, so we hold Don's family in prayer as they navigate the details, which will be uh, in the summer uh, with when they can gather the family together in a safer way outdoors. Um, and we pray for Doris, who has been moved to hospice at uh, Stratford Pines. Uh, she uh, emotion, was very emotionally distraught as well as to be expected uh, that Don lost, uh, passed away. Today, I believe would have been Don's birthday as well. He would have been 92, um, if not in the next couple of days ahead. Um, so, and she would follow, she follows with her 92nd birthday as well, just days after his. So, um, hold them all in prayer and their families that surround them. We continue to pray for Tyler, who is recovering. Uh, continued prayers for Dick Rutherford, who fractured his hip. Uh, he is still at Great Lakes Rehab. For his wife, Krissa, who has COVID, um, I don't have an update on her, but um, know that she has had it. Uh, to my knowledge, she is hanging in there at this point in time. Last week, we also shared uh, a prayer request for Maureen's daughter-in-law, Maureen and Wayne's daughter-in-law, Brooke, uh, for her papa, uh, who passed away um, last Monday as well, uh, losing his fight to COVID. Um, are there others that you would lift uh, personally for the congregation that you would like shared this morning? You're welcome to unmute uh, and share. I have a family from St. Charles, if you could hold them in your prayers. Um, Leonard is the last name. Sue Leonard has cancer and her boy Gordy has fought his whole life with medical issues and their grandson also ended up in the hospital with COVID symptoms and um, some mental health in the family. So the, the poor family, I just, I just can't even 
then um, on Christmas day or the day after Christmas, Sue ended up in the hospital with her cancer numbers through the roof. So, um, and having to remove fluid off the lungs and all of it. And I think Gordy's still in the hospital. So that just prayers for that whole family, the whole Leonard family. Others, folks, that you would share? I'd like prayers for the Sigmundson family. They're one of our scalp families, and the mom has, she was diagnosed with stage four cancer about a year or so ago. She's battled chemo. They've got four kids, one with special needs, and she is not doing well, and her numbers are going up, so she's been doing chemo again, and she just needs prayers. It's a, a family that really has been struggling. Hmm. Can you say the last name again? Sigmundson. Sigmundson. Um, actually, I just got a message from Doris's daughter. Uh, sounds like mom has started to eat again, so they haven't been able to put her on hospice. Um, they are missing Don and uh, needing prayers for strength as well. So that's the message from Holly, uh, Doris's daughter that I just received. Um, so all of those things and so many more, I don't know that I see any more prayer requests from you all or muting or unmuting yourselves. Um, so let us turn to God for a word of prayer. Loving God in Christ, you embrace people of every nation and make them members of the same body, shares in the promise of the gospel. For the Holy Church of God, that through its faithful witness, the wisdom of God in its rich variety be known in heaven and earth. Loving God, you judge the people with righteousness and the poor with justice. For nations, rulers, and authorities, to forsake violence and be guided by the light of truth, that righteousness may flourish and justice abound in every land, we pray. Loving God, wise men from afar come, came to visit the Holy Family and found a place of rest and worship for our city and for all who live here. We pray that we may be a community of hospitality, welcoming the stranger, and shelter, sheltering the refugee. Loving God in your providence, the land yields prosperity for the people that righteousness may prevail in the land. For our planet Earth, we pray that we may dwell peacefully with nature, be good stewards of its resources and share in its abundance for the sake of human flourishing. Loving God, you defend the cause of the poor, give deliverance to the needy, and save those who are oppressed. For those who suffer the cruelty of poverty and all who endeavor to transform system, systems of economic justice, we pray. Loving God, you take pity on the weak. For those whose bodies are enfeebled by disease or whose spirits are debilitated by illness, we pray that they may be restored to wholeness of life. Loving God, your servant Paul was imprisoned for preaching the good news of Jesus. We pray for any who are wrongly incarcerated that they may be liberated and for those whose guilt is valid and imprisonment warranted that they may know genuine repentance of their sin and reconciliation with their community. Gracious God, because you have called us your children we are bold to ask for what we need, confident in your goodness, through faith in our Lord and brother, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples as he continues to teach us today to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Our final hymn today is number 206, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light, which is the same as what I listed. I just chose to pick a different phrase, number 206. Friends, receive this benediction. Join with me if you are able. Arise and go forth to shine for all the world to see. We go to spread the good news of light and love, righteousness and justice. Go now and follow the star that will guide you on your journey this week, this year, and forever. As the Magi of old, we go forth in trust and excitement, transformed in the presence of the child of the light. May the blessing of God the Father, the God of light, rest upon you and fill you with light. Amen. Amen.